Millions of people already use Kibana for a wide range of purposes, but it was still a challenge for the average business user to quickly learn. Visualizations often require quite a bit of experimentation and several iterations to get the results just right. Visualizations in Kibana, paired with the speed of Elasticsearch, is up to the challenge, but it still requires advanced planning, or you'll end up having to redo it a few times. The new kit on the block, Kibana Lens, was designed to change this, and we're here to learn how to take advantage of this capability. So let's get started. Kibana Lens is changing the traditional visualization approach in Elasticsearch, where we were forced to pre-select a visualization type along with an index pattern in advance, and then be constrained by those initial settings. As needs naturally evolve, many users have wanted a more flexible approach to visualizations. Kibana Lens accomplishes this with a single visualization app, where you can drag and drop the parameters and change the visualization on the fly. A few key benefits of Kibana Lens include convenient features for fields, such as showing their distribution of values or searching fields by name for quickly tracking down the data you want, quick aggregation metrics like min, max, average, sum, count, and unique count, switching between multiple chart types after the fact, such as bar, area, line, and stack charts, the ability to drag and drop any field to get it immediately visualized or to break down the existing chart by its values, automatic suggestions on other possible visualization types, showing the raw data in data tables, combining the visualization with searching and filtering capabilities, combining data from multiple index patterns, and quickly saving the visualization for allowing for easy dashboard composition. Okay, let's see how Kibana Lens works. So first we need to have something to visualize. The power of Lens really comes into play with rich, structured, and time-oriented data. To get this kind of data quickly, let's use the Metric Beat tool, which enables us to collect dozens of system metrics from Linux out of the box. Since we've already installed a couple of packages from the Elasticsearch apt repository, it is very easy to add another one. Just apt get install the metric beat package in a desired version and start the service like so. sudo apt dash get install metric beat equals uh, 7.5.2. And sudo system control Start metric beat. All right, so now all the rich metrics like CPU, load, memory, network, processes, etc., are all being collected in 10 second intervals to our Elasticsearch. Now, to make things even more interesting, let's perform some load testing while we collect our system metrics to see some of the numbers fluctuate. We'll do so by a simple tool called stress. The installation is simply this command sudo apt install stress. Before you start, check out how many cores and available memory you have to define the stress parameters reasonably. So for processor cores, we can type in nproc. We have one virtual CPU in our virtual machine here. And for memory, we can type in free-h. And I have about 4.3 gigabytes of free memory to work with here. So we will run two loads, first spinning up a worker to max out the CPU core for two minutes or 120 seconds. So to do that, I'll say stress dash dash CPU one, because I only have one, dash dash timeout, 120. And we'll let that run for a couple of minutes. Okay, two minutes have passed and it's done. Secondly, we'll run five workers that should allocate 256 megabytes of memory each for three minutes. We'll say stress dash dash VM five, dash dash timeout, 180. And we'll come back in three minutes when that's done. Okay, and that finished, so we should have some uh, good metric data logged. Let's pull up Kibana. Just uh, go to your web browser. And we'll go to 127.0.0.1.5601. Okay, so now we are going to create our visualizations using Lens. 
Let's follow this tutorial to get the basics around Lens, and when you're settled, feel free to just click around, as Lens is exactly the tool with experimentation pre-baked into its very nature. Now before we start, we need an index pattern that will point to the indices that we want to draw the data from. So let's go ahead and open the Management app. We can just click on the uh, Discover icon here, and that takes us to Management, Index Patterns, Create Index Pattern, and we'll create one for Metric Beat Star. So we'll just type that in. Metric beat star. Hey, there it is. And we'll go on to the next step. And for the time filter, we will use at timestamp and create index pattern. Great. Okay, so now we can open the Visualize app in Kibana. You'll find it in the left menu under Create New Visualization. We'll open that up and select Lens for the Lens Visualization type, the first one in the grid here. And you should be welcomed by this big empty screen telling you to drop some fields. So let's drop some. Make sure you've selected the metric beat star index pattern and use the field search on the left panel to search for process.cpu. There we go. There will be various options, but let's start with system.process.cpu.total percent. From here, we'll just drag it to the main area and see the instant magic that is Cabana Lens. Ooh. And a brief aside, if you do need to reference the collected metrics of the metric beats system module, which we're using, you'll find them all in these system fields that we're looking at. Now we're going to switch the aggregation that we have on our Y axis. The default averages are not really meaningful in this case. What we are interested in is the maximum. So click on the aggregation that we have in the right panel. And from here, choose the maximum option. All right, that worked. So next we will split the chart by another dimension, which is going to be the process.executable to see what binary was running in the process. The technique is the same, just search for the field on the left search panel and it should come up. Let's look for process.executable. There it is. And you could also just filter for string fields first with the filter by type if you wanted to. If you then click on the given field, you'll find a nice overview of a distribution of the top values for the selected period here. In our case, we'll see which executables had the highest count of collected metrics in the period. To use the field, just grab it and drop it to the main area. Pretty cool. We're starting to see it come together here, but let's iterate further, as would be typical when creating such dashboards for a business. Let's increase the number of values we can see in our chart from the default three to five, and let's switch from seeing the overall top for the given period to top value for each timestamp. To do that, I go to the right here where it says break down by top values of process executable, change that from three to five, and change the grouping to top values for each timestamp here. All right. So now we'll see the top five processes that consume the most CPU at that given time slot. Excellent. So now your visualization should look something similar to this. And from the chart, you can see how our stress tool was pushing the CPU while it was running. Now click the save link in the top left corner and save it as a new visualization with some meaningful name like lens top five processes. Perfect. To test out some more lens features and to have some more material on a dashboard that we're going to create later, we're going to create another visualization. So let's repeat the procedure by going to visualize and then create visualization. And then we'll pick lens again. Now this time we're gonna search for memory.actual fields. And let's drag system.memory.actual.use.bytes into the main area as well as free. This creates another stacked bar chart, but we're going to change this to a stacked area chart. You can do so by clicking on the bigger chart icon and picking the desired type, a stacked area. There we go. 
We can also customize the granularity of the display data, which is by default 30 seconds. Our data is actually captured in 10 second intervals, so let's switch that interval by clicking on the at timestamp in the X axis box and select customize time interval. And we'll change that to 10 seconds. Great. So our new chart, visualizing the memory usage, should look similar to the one here. If you ran the stress command aimed at memory, you should see some sharp spikes here. If you ran the stress command aimed at memory, you should see some sharp spikes going on in here. Now let's save our current progress again. And let's call this as a new visualization lens memory usage. Great. The last feature we're going to try out is the ability to stack multiple layers to combine different types of charts in the same visualization. Again, we'll create a new lens visualization. And this time we're going to search for socket.summary. And that's what we're going to use for this next step. Let's drag and drop the system.socket.summary.all.count field. And we'll change the chart type to a line chart. And let's change the time interval to one minute. Pretty easy. Now click the plus button in the right pane, which will add a new visualization layer. And we're going to change this to a bar chart. To do that, you have to click on this little tiny chart icon in the layer. So there we are, a bar chart. And we'll drop in the at timestamp. For the X axis. And for the y-axis, let's search for system.socket.summary.tcp.all. And we'll drop in uh, listening. And we'll also drop in established. And we'll drop in close weight. And additionally, you could also add in the uh, system.socket.summary.udp all dot count. Drop that in too, why not? Lastly, let's change the time granularity to the same value as the second layer. Back to one minute. All right. Now, for some reason, it added these all as minimums. I want them to be averages. So let's go ahead and fix that on each one of these y-axis uh, dimensions here. Fix that to average. Same one for this one. And again. And again. That's better. So now our visualization should look similar to this. We can see the average of all socket connections in the line chart and TCP UDP open sockets in various states in the bar chart. Let's go ahead and save this. Save it as lens-sockets. All right. So naturally, the final step is combining everything we've done into a single dashboard to monitor our vitals. Let's open the dashboard app from the left menu. and create new dashboard. And we'll say add. And add all of our saved lens visualizations. So now feel free to play around with the dashboard and add more visualizations. For example, you might want to try to add a data table of the raw tabular data in this corner here. Uh, you can try that as an exercise if you'd like. You are well prepared for any data exploration and visualization in the wild. Use Lens whenever you need to perform some data-driven experimentation with various metrics and dimensions that you have in your data to tune your dashboards for the most effective storytelling.